Those of you who have been on my channel long enough may remember Genesis Apologetics. These were the guys behind the John and Jane series that I covered. Now these guys seem to have a weird obsession with Lucy, and apparently they've debunked her in 11 minutes. Also, 9 minutes, and 70, and in a book. Wait, is that David Reeves? Anyways, the video that we're covering today is about Lucy, the 11 minute one. But it makes so many claims that I don't think I can sit here and do it by myself. So here to help me is none other than Professor Stick, another great YouTuber. Hey, he Heath. Glad to be here. So let's dive in. But is Lucy really a missing link to humans or is she just an extinct three and a half foot ape? Stick around to find out. Um, it's both. If humans evolved from apes, then wouldn't our ancestors be apes? Not to mention the fact that we are still apes. So yeah, Lucy was an extinct ape, but she's important because she's an extinct ape that shows the transition between primitive traits and more modern human-like traits. In 1974, Donald Johansson found a small elbow bone in the Ethiopian desert. Looking around, he found several other bones that looked like they could be from the same creature. He later returned to uncover hundreds of bone fragments scattered along a hillside. They believed that the creature was an adult female that weighed 55 pounds and stood three and a half feet tall, not anywhere close to a human. But after gluing these hundreds of bone pieces into 47 parts and creating models of what they think the creature looked like, evolutionists came up with some surprisingly human-like creatures. Wow, how do you go from this, to this, to these? You're oversimplifying here. First, obviously, we have to assemble the bones for it to make sense. The pieces aren't just going to lie down in the exact perfect order when we discover them. And we can sort of picture how animals will look like before we assemble their bones, just judging by our knowledge of anatomy. Second, we can use these bones to estimate what the Australopithecus looked like. Now, I'm not a paleontologist, so I can't say for sure how the portrayal of the flesh was created, but I do know that we can use many physiological features to give a good estimate. For example, in nominate was crooked, indicating a broad iliac flare with an anterior wrap, which tells us a few things such as the long pubic rami. Her pubic arc also indicated similar structures to modern humans today. Another example is her cranium size, indicating a smaller brain that was slightly greater in size than an ape's or chimp's, but less than a human's. And also the valgus knee indicated that she walked upright, which is significant since it tells us that bipedalism evolved before intelligence. And they didn't even find any hands or feet with Lucy. Okay, sure. But it's not like Lucy is the only member of Australopithecus afarensis that we've found. We have found a hand, and it does indicate that they had the ability to use tools and such. And as far as I can tell, we have found one foot bone, which admittedly is not a lot, but it is enough to tell us that their feet were arched in a way that did allow them to stand upright, more similar to modern humans than to other modern apes. In addition, we did find significant parts of Lucy's limbs, such as the finger bone, which tells us that the Afarenses had a structure for tree branch grasping and ape-like walking, but at the same time evolved to depart from this type of lifestyle in favor of more human-like motions. And they certainly didn't find any eye whites, a feature that only humans have, and not apes. I wonder if they did this to make her look more human-like. <laughs> Actually, white sclera isn't exclusive to humans. Certain types of dogs and cats have eye whites along with multiple other mammals. Even though modern apes mostly have black eyes, some do have white ones. Plus, the Australopithecus having white sclerae is more of an educated guess, since certain branches of human ancestors began developing eye whites as proposed by the cooperative eye hypothesis. This states that we evolved to have white eyes due to communication purposes. Therefore, judging by the social interactions we were able to deduce from the Australopithecus, it's not unreasonable to assume they had white sclerae. In school textbooks across the country, Lucy is represented as a clear ape to human transition, walking upright, holding babies, and gazing intelligently as she walks. This teaching sows seeds of doubts in the minds of Christian students, leading them to believe that the biblical creation account is based on far-fetched fantasies. Well, I mean, I don't want to say it, but... Okay, look. Even by Genesis' own account, its author was not there to see pretty much anything that he writes about, and he gives no claim as to how he got that knowledge, so it does read a lot like a myth, and there's hardly anything to the contrary. Well, let's take a look at the evidence from head to toe. Starting with Lucy's skull, we really don't have much to go on. As leading paleontologist Dr. Leakey said, Lucy's skull was so incomplete that most of it was imagination made of plaster of Paris, 
thus making it impossible to draw any firm conclusion about what species she belonged to. It's as if you think Lucy is the only fossil we found on the Australopithecus afarensis, and that's simply not true. Sure, we've only found about 40% of Lucy, but that is supplemented by the many other fossils we found. Not to mention that you are completely underestimating these scientists. Again, I'm not a paleontologist, but we can infer a lot from just a few pieces. When Lucy's actual skull bones are put together and the empty parts are filled in with what they imagine her skull looked like, she looks surprisingly similar to a modern bonobo. Well, according to who? According to you? And just looking at these pictures, I can see noticeable differences between the two, namely the shape of the teeth, the brow ridge, and the oblique line. But I mean, if you look at depictions of Lucy, her head does kind of look like a bonobo, or other apes. Yes, her head was shaped very primitively, but that doesn't take away from the fact that she had lots of other traits that were more similar to modern humans. While we only have a few broken skull bones from Lucy, other skulls of Lucy's kind show that their spines entered into their skulls at an angle, just about like chimps, showing that she likely walked on all fours and not on two legs like humans. I tried to look up where they found this chart, just to see what that original source had to say about this, but unsurprisingly, they gave absolutely no citation in their video, its description, on their website, on their guides to their courses, or even their mobile app, which, by the way, they have a mobile app. It's not useful or helpful. But when I looked up Australopithecus foramen magnum, that's the hole in the skull that the spinal cord goes through, this came up. And look at that, there's the chart. And it says this, which basically said that the orientation of these holes in the skulls aren't related to its locomotion, but instead the size of the brain. And it states that, and I quote, the anterior position of the occipital condyles suggests a head posture more similar to that of modern humans than apes. I got that from their source. However, it does go on to say that their anatomy was more complicated than we can understand. Next, we have the inner ears. Dr. Spohr, professor of evolutionary anthropology, has extensively studied the inner ears of various apes and humans. After studying Australopithecines, he revealed that the balancing system in their ears were the same as modern apes, enabling them to live in trees. Um, no, the claim isn't that it means that they lived in trees, but instead that they were quadrupedal, or walked on all fours. But even then, Spohr stated, and I quote, it is concluded that any link between the characteristic dimensions of the human canals and locomotion will be more complex than a simple association with a broad categories of quadrupedal versus bipedal behavior. He later states, and I quote, South African Australopithecines show the ancestral great ape-like condition, which has been interpreted as support for studies concluding that these hominids were faculative rather than obligatory bipeds. And what that means is that these Australopithecines were indeed bipedal, but not exclusively so. Sometimes they walked upright, and sometimes they walked on all fours, depending on the situation. He also seems to think that this has more to do with the size and development of the brain than it does locomotion, exactly as before. There's also loads more evidence of Australopithecus afarensis being bipedal. Next, we have this vertebrae that was believed to be part of Lucy for over 40 years. Recently, scientists learned that it was actually from an extinct relative of the baboon. Mmm, yes, yes, I see you're talking about the Theropithecus. Scott Williams noticed that this particular bone did not match properly with Lucy's other bone fragments due to its size and shape. He then ran a comparison test and noticed that the single bone belonged to a species of the Theropithecus. In order to double check everything, he ran the same analyses on other bones, and they were all confirmed to be part of Lucy's actual body. Just because one bone got into the mixture doesn't invalidate our entire discovery of the Afarensis. Plus, it was our knowledge of science that allowed us to determine where this alien fragment came from. It seems that silly creationists are grasping everything they can in an attempt to disprove evolution, without knowing that it doesn't support their worldview at all. When Johansson first discovered Lucy's pelvis, he reported it was badly crushed with distortion and cracking. His team believed that it had been broken apart and then fused together during later fossilization, which caused it to be in an anatomically impossible position and to flare out like a chimp's pelvis. Their solution to this? Use a buzzsaw to cut it apart and piece it back together. After this pelvis reconstruction, they noted, it was a tricky job, but after taking out the kink of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. Even evolutionists in the famous Human Evolution Journal have problems with this reconstruction, stating, We think that the reconstruction overestimates the width of this pelvis area, creating a very human-like sacral plane. 
Well, actually, that's not how it went. First of all, the pelvis was crushed coincidentally so that when the pieces fit together, it made a shape that was physically improbable and impossible. It didn't resemble anything, even though some could speculate it was similar to a chimps, but not a chimps. Second, the scientists restored it as best as they could to the original shape. It wasn't a manipulation, it was simply a restoration. Third, Lovejoy didn't actually change the original fossil. He made a duplicate, which he then reconstructed while keeping the actual fossil in its original form. So nothing is being hidden here. Anyone can go and view the original. Finally, fossil reconstruction is a very common procedure. It's quite often that bones are trampled on by animals or damaged by natural phenomenons. Reconstructing fossils to what they originally looked like is an entire field of hands-on science that is practiced very often. It's kind of exasperating at this point when creationists purposely lie, stretch the truth, or quote mine in order to further their agenda. But also very sad, it doesn't take a special eye to expose creationists for what they are. Since 1995, evolutionists have been battling out Lucy's gender, with some even suggesting that male names like Brucey or Lucifer would better fit the fossil. So? I mean, so what? We can be unsure of its sex whether it's a transitional fossil or not. Now we have Lucy's wrist. When looking at a cast of Lucy's bones, experts at George Washington University revealed that her wrist was stiff like a chimpanzee's. This enabled Lucy's wrist to lock in place for knuckle walking, just like most apes today. Another study noted, measurements of the shape of wrist bones showed that Lucy's type were knuckle walkers, similar to gorillas. Even the fingers of Lucy's kind have been shown to be curved and ape-like, best suited for swinging in trees. Look, as I said before, Lucy and other Australopithecines were both bipedal and quadrupedal. They were both terrestrial and arboreal. That's how they evolved. That's how they transitioned. So, as usual, the creationist is either dishonest, doesn't know what he's talking about, or, as I find most often to be the case, he's parroting somebody who is either dishonest or doesn't know what he's talking about. And so far, every claim that they've made can be corrected by even spending 10 minutes looking it up. But they're still going to make money selling this sort of stuff on pseudo-educational courses. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. But head on over to Professor Stick's channel for part two. Link is in the description and also right here on the screen. You can, you can click it here. It, it couldn't be easier. Go ahead, subscribe to him while you're at it. Go on.